Phoenix police pointing their guns at people of color, threatening deadly force, sometimes over petty crimes. We've learned it happens hundreds of times a month. Melissa Blazieth fighting for the records on these show of force cases, and she has more for us right now at 10. Get out the the threat of deadly police force against an unarmed black family accused of shoplifting a doll. It was just very a scary situation. I never thought I'd be in. traumatizing for me and my daughters. The tense confrontation between Phoenix police officers pointing guns at a family. When this witness video went viral, police chief Jerry Williams quickly ordered changes, equipping all patrol officers with body cams and requiring them to report every time they point a gun at a person. Phoenix police call it PGP. When a gun is pointed at someone, that's a traumatic event. We want to articulate that. We want to document that. Um, and I think this is a first step in being, again, that accountable, transparent organization. For two months, the ABC 15 investigators pushed Phoenix police to provide reports and videos and data about these gun incidents. What we received so far seems to support long-held theories about police violence and a racial divide. Phoenix police point their guns at hundreds of people a month. And the people looking down those barrels tend to be young men with black or brown skin. That's a problem for me. According to the police department, there were 318 PGP reports in September alone, detailing when 457 people faced officers' guns. And 77% of those people were people of color. This is not okay. Three out of four people that get the gun pulled out on them, demographically, like, it's disproportionate. The most significant disparity for black people, 24% of PGPs, but just 7% of Phoenix's population. Their perceptions of black men being more of a, a threat than anyone else. Our children should not have to carry somebody else's bias. Janelle Wood of Black Mothers Forum and Vidi Hernandez of Poder in Action both sit on the Mayor's Committee for Police Reform. Your race in an interaction with, with police matters on whether or not they're going to pull a gun out, whether they feel and they perceive you as a threat, and who then ultimately gets shot. In fact, by Phoenix Police's own count, 65% of the people officers actually shot since 2017 were identified as people of color. Phoenix Police say nearly all of those people also had weapons. Earlier this month, we asked the president of the largest Phoenix Police Officers Union whether there was a racism problem. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And that's, that's what they do to every department. Racist. Systemic. You no, know, you have these key buzzwords that they all use. Assistant Police Chief Mike Kurtenbach says the police department needs more time and more data. We need to contextualize what that data really means. So what type of calls were they? Looking beyond the color of somebody's skin or their sex, what was the nature of the contact? Kurtenbach says Phoenix officers undergo extensive training on when to pull their guns out. He's trying to gain compliance. Uh, the use of deadly force would be authorized at that point. One can assume that. ABC 15 originally asked for police body cam videos for all gun pointing incidents from September. But a police spokesman said there were so many it would take their public record staff an unreasonable amount of time. So we were told to pick just 10. We chose reports filed on a single day, September 17th. Police gave us 11 reports and videos for three. This one involves a suspect named Jerry Fitzgerald. Responding to a call about a guy with a gun, the officers say Fitzgerald ignored their commands to put his hands up, instead reaching toward a holster on his hip. Police body cam video doesn't show that moment, only the aftermath. So you're saying you were afraid of them when they hopped out on you? I was like, what the f***? I, kinda, I didn't know what to do. Drop, roll, tug, pray. In another case, an officer approaches a man accused of trying to shoplift bread from a gas station. Don't turn the car on. You see a glimpse of the gun there. The officer reported he felt in danger when the suspect ignored commands and reached into a backpack. Never turn off the vehicle. Some PGPs involved violent crimes or armed suspects, but most did not. In one incident, a naked man was found sleeping in a vacant building. In another, an officer responding to a fight call saw a man running and held him at gunpoint, but he wasn't involved. There were also about 50 PGP reports that listed no crime at all. Supervisors are reviewing every body-worn camera video associated with a PGP to ensure that the actions are consistent with our policy and that those actions are properly documented. Have any of these incidents that, that have been reviewed so far, have they been flagged for potential policy violations? Not that I'm aware of. Community advocates say better training on implicit bias, de-escalation techniques, and less lethal options is needed now 
And if there's lessons to be learned that lead to policy changes, uh, then we'll do that. I'm Investigator Melissa Blasius, A24.